Hello. And so in this video, what we're going to do is actually take some data that pre-exists, so some tabular data that probably exists in the wild somewhere, and we're going to show you how you can actually make RDF using OpenRefine. And so I'm assuming that you have worked with OpenRefine in uh, cleaning and inspecting your data set. Uh, and with a simple extension, we can actually also build RDF data and expect, uh, inspect it using uh, the turtle view. And so let's go to the screen and see how we can do that. Right, so uh, this is based on some slides by uh, Albert Meronio Penuela, uh, which you can find here at uh, bit.ly slash dh slides. Okay, so let's go. So um, for that, you need to have a working uh, uh, OpenRefine setup. Uh, and we're going to use this uh, last recipe, this installing OpenRefine and then adding the RDF extension. So I'm just going to show you how that works. So I'm assuming that you have, uh, like I said, uh, some knowledge about OpenRefine. If you don't, you go to openrefine.org and you can download the, the variant that's uh, for your operating system, so Windows, Mac, whatever, and you install it and then you have um, OpenRefine on your PC. You close OpenRefine and we add an, a one extension, which is the RDF extension. Right? So it's uh, actually linked here. So if you go there, then we find uh, this uh, GitHub page where you download the latest release. You get a zip file and you extract it in a specific location. It says here ext in the extensions slash RDF dash extension. And depend it depends a bit on your uh, where your local application data for uh, OpenRefine is. In my case, that's in uh, uh, app data. Right, so here I find OpenRefine, and then here is my extensions thing, and then there's an RDF extension where you uh, unzip all your uh, material that you just downloaded. Then you restart OpenRefine. Let's do that now, and then it will, uh, you know, start the OpenRefine thing, and then hopefully uh, we get the actual server running. So let's wait a second. All right, it always takes some time. So there it goes. So this is OpenRefine as normal. It will just start the, the server. I made it a bit bigger so you can actually see it uh, uh, here. Um, and then as normal, we can start a new project by importing some files. Okay, so uh, if you go to this, uh, if you follow the slides, there's actually a nice CSV example that we can follow. Uh, and the CSV contains of a few simple lines. Uh, so it has these, uh, uh, column headers, right? So the the rank, a country, and an integer. That's apparently the GDPR. Uh, sorry, GPR. Uh, and then we have some data here, right? So these are uh, eight lines that has a, have a rank, a name of a country, and then some value for this GPR. Uh, GDP. Sorry, I said GPR. I mean GDP. All right. So. Uh, what we can do is we can actually load that in our OpenRefine. Let's do that. So we create a new project from this computer. We choose a file and we choose this CSV file, which I have set up here. Okay, so I do open. And then uh, here on the oops, I do next. Sorry, I have to sometimes make my screen a bit bigger and smaller. So now it, uh, it sort of has imported this data. And if I click create project, it will actually do so. All right, so uh, it's now loading the, the CSV file and presenting us the results here. So this is your normal OpenRefine setup, and now you would start you know, manipulating the data. So you can still do that, and if you after you've cleaned it, you can actually define a mapping to RDF. So we have added this nice button here, RDF. There's also this nice one, Wikidata, but we're not going to click it now. So in RDF, we actually see uh, that we can edit an RDF skeleton which is the mapping between the table data and the graph data that we want to get out of it, right? We want to write turtle files at the end. Okay, so this is the, the skeleton. This is basically the mapping setup. And there's a few things here. Here on the left, we see what kind of things are our rows, right? So in this case, our rows are the countries. And that's uh, typically a, a CSV file talks about one type of thing, which is these, uh, the, the record or the row. And then here you see what kind of properties do you want to use to uh, uh, to map all these uh, values that we have in the uh, in the in the columns, right? So we have rank, country, and int, which are imported from our CSV. So first of all, I need to figure out what kind of URI do I want my subject to be in this case, the countries, right? Because we don't have anything yet. 
So one thing is that you can define those things here and then you can every time you can click on RDF preview to see what it looks like. So if you do that now, we see that there's no RDF yet. We just have some prefix uh, definitions. Okay, so what we can do is we can just say, uh, well, okay, I just take my row URI and then uh, make that uh, an identifier. So that's already done for me. It takes a row index, so just a, you know, which row is it in my file? And it takes that as the most important thing of the URI. And then it sticks that at the end of some base URI, which we can define here. Okay, so that's good, for, good enough for now. But there's still no triples because we only have the, the, the URI. So we still need to define some property and some, some uh, object. Right? So let's do that for the first one. This is, this is about the rank. Right? So the rank is, you know, which country, how high are they ranked? So the rank for Qatar was one and uh, for the Netherlands two or Luxembourg two or something. So I can say, okay, that's fine, but now I want to use a, a specific property. Um, so I can use, I can make my own, right? I just say something like HTTP uh, example.org slash rank, right? Or something like this. Well, it's not found. Okay, I can edit. So now it's a property that's available to me and I can apply it. So now I say the URI has rank and then it's the rank and I can click on the on the rank itself and say, what kind of thing is it? So for now, let's just leave it as text. And now I have my first triples because I have property defined. Let's see what it looks like. Hey, that's cool. I now have, uh, indeed for every row, I have every row gets a, a URI, which is this horrible thing. And then slash zero. Yeah, that's what I said I wanted. Okay, maybe I don't want it, but let's see, look later. But then this is nice. And I have a subject, a predicate and an object, right? So zero has rank one and country one has rank two. Okay, so maybe I looked at that and I don't really like it. So I want to maybe change my base URI to stating uh, HTTP uh, my country data dot org, uh, right? So uh, rankings, something like this. So this is my, my data set and all the data that I'll produce now get this base URI. So let's see. Okay, so this already looks a bit nicer, I think. Right, this is just sort of my base URI that I now, that now all my uh, URIs get, uh, can use if I don't define otherwise. Okay, so maybe zero is not really informative. So what I can do actually here is to not say it's just a row index, but I can actually define a expression that makes this a bit more complex. So I just show you how that works. We can write a, what's called a regular expression. So I can say something like, uh, what I want for my URI to be is not just the value, but the country plus the value. And then of course the base URI gets attached. So we get these things. Right? And then I think, oh, this is nice. I like this. So let's, uh, let's just do that. So I need to click okay somewhere below. It's here. And then I click okay again. And now if I do RDF preview, I indeed get these country zero as rank one. Okay, that's nice. And now I want to add more properties, right? So we have the country cell. So actually the country cell is the name of the country. So maybe name or label would work best. So actually here I can reuse some notion of a label. Uh, and the most often used notion of label is called RDF as label. That's just something that you can reuse. Uh, so if I do that, I will get this one, right? So it's already preloaded in, uh, in, the, in uh, the RDF extension. And I can choose it, and you can see here that's a shorthand name, but there's also the, the longer URI that you can actually uh, see. So if I, if I use it, I now get the label and it maps the country. So let's see what happens. Yeah, so now I get a, a second triple for each uh, row. So I get country zero has rank one, and then I get a semicolon. That means that I repeat the subject, just as we do, in, uh, as we saw in the turtle video. And, as I, and I also know that country zero has label Qatar. Okay, so that's cool. Let's go for the third one. And the third one is the int. So this int is actually not an integer, but it's the GDP, right? So now I want to give it a nice, a nice triple for the GDP, but I don't want to invent it myself, right? I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Probably other people have thought about the GDP. Okay, so you can actually uh, have a look at uh, that by going to, for example, a source like lov.linkdata.es, which is a general catalog of RDF vocabularies. So that, this is the page. It has all kinds of vocabularies about all kinds of things. And if you find a nice URI that matches what you want to say, then you can actually just reuse it by just using the URI in your uh, turtle file, right? So we can actually look for, you know, a label, what kind of labels do we have? And then you 
will probably find all kinds of label label versions, right? Including RDFS label, which is on top. So we can do the same for uh, GDP. Do we get any GDP? Well, GDP no, GDP year. Uh, uh, we have here one. GDP, which is provided by the FAO. This is okay. Maybe, maybe I think that's a nice notion. Uh, yes, some gross dollars. Okay, so this is exactly what I mean. Right, so now I can just use this URI uh, and uh, use it in my uh, in my uh, mapping file. So I can say, well, this property, I want it to be this thing that I just put under my control C, control V. Right, so it doesn't find it because it's not preloaded, this FAL uh, source, but I can just add it. And now my uh, value maps to an integer. Okay, so let's see what happens. Indeed, now I get for every uh, row, I get three triples. So I get the country zero has GDP uh, 31,000. It has the rank one and it has label Qatar. So that's nice. I can clean it up a little bit. I can say, for example, that actually this rank is not a, uh, or this this uh, integer is not a, uh, a string, but it's actually a number. So I can say that. Well, that it makes it a little bit easier to interpret for everybody who wants to uh, to do something with that, right? So now I actually get, you see this, and we didn't explain this in the turtle file format, but you can actually, for every literal, for every value, you can actually indicate what kind of thing it is. Like it's a string or an integer or a double or a, a year or something like that. Right, so this uh, it goes a bit beyond this, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's nice to know that you can do all these kind of data cleaning uh, things with RDF as well. So other things that you can do is do reconciliation. So there I can actually use an external surface and say, well, I have a list of country names, Qatar and the Netherlands and whatever. And I can actually look up the values of those things and then replace my string values with the URIs, for example, of geo names. So there's all kinds of nice services for that that's, that are built in into this RDF extension, but I'm not going to show them to you, but they are there. Um, so the nice thing what you can then do is actually export your data as RDF turtle, for example. So I can do that. And now what we've just been sort of previewing is now a formal, uh, formally uh, the result here. So I'm just gonna, right? So we now look at my turtle file and I can actually import that into uh, any other uh, triple store or any uh, uh, tool that uses uh, RDF. Okay, so that's a sort of a hands-on tutorial on how to use OpenRefine to build RDF data. There's much more to it. Of course, you would have to dive into a proper turtle syntax, but it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And if you, you know, if you get the first two lines right, you can copy all the 10,000 lines that are below will be mapped in the same way. So that's a very powerful way of building linked data sets. Thank you very much.